Google Maps or Apple Maps? Oh, Google Maps. Google Maps, right? Because yeah. Apple Maps sucks. Apple Maps people, get your fucking shit to. Why are you still? I I get that you like the iOS like world. Get out. Stop it. Dude, Use Google. Be an adult. Use Google grow, Maps. Grow up. <laughs> I would trust Bernie Madoff more than <laughs> more than Apple Maps. <laughs> That's about that. Thanks for coming on, dude. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never been invited on a podcast, so this is. Yeah, when I, when I asked you, I think you sent <laughs> like a laughing emoji or something, and you were yeah. like, "Why are you doing this?" Yeah. Uh, Why did you even ask me to be on here? What, what, <laughs> what compelled you to to reach um, out to me? Uh, a number of reasons. Like for one, well, yeah. I, I really like talking to people. I like talking to different types of people, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so I, I think that this has been like a fun vehicle for me to have on just, you know, different types of artists and things like that and just right. kind of talk about what they do. And yeah. uh, you're a cinematographer. And the one time we did get to speak already, you were yeah. saying you started as a gaffer lighting mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Um, and it's like the most of the time I spend with the videos mm-hmm. I'm doing winds up being behind a desk editing, but I don't really think of myself as an editor so much so much like I direct things and then I just wind up making myself do all these other jobs so like when I think about my projects it's very much so from a cinematographer's point of view Mm -hmm. so then there's you know you shooting these overcast videos and stuff and you guys are putting out so many at a time I figured like you probably have a very uh unique perspective from just doing this sort of work so I just thought it'd be cool to talk for a little bit yeah no that's about that yeah no, I, I, I'm, I'm flattered i promise uh yeah i was just uh i don't know i've never been invited on a podcast so it was just it was just yeah interesting, well <laughs> interesting request my, my channel is not the highest of honors but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here you go yeah no and um yeah like before anytime i do any of these i get like definitely like a little bit nervous beforehand just yeah. because it is weird kind of just recording yourself talking and stuff but i yeah. i try i try to make these feel more like conversations yeah. and interviews because i don't yeah. i don't think anyone likes being interviewed yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah no but excited to be here it was cool yeah thank, thank you for having me the first time we met was uh renting the yeah. black magic uh yeah. pocket yeah our uh our color is block our color is Brock came down from Toronto and was just basically um, telling us about how oh the new Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera it's fucking amazing it's I can swear right yeah fuck, yeah fuck yeah yeah I don't fuck have any yeah. sponsors or anything. even even if I did <laughs> <But>. <laughs> yeah um, and he was just telling us about this camera and we had just recently come off a shoot where um, uh, the red we were using got. S- not seriously damaged, but um, a dodgeball hit it. Oh, okay. Was it was it that uh, Eric uh, yeah, Doa the, video? Yeah, the Eric Doa video. DOA, okay. Yeah, people say Eric Doa. Every time I've read it, I haven't yeah. been sure which way to go. Yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh, it's supposed to be Eric Doa. Uh-huh. But I don't think he cares if you say yeah. Eric Doa. There, there's a uh, I can't, I'll, I'll think of who yeah. in a sec. There's like some rapper that deals with the same thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's JID. Like oh. he, people never know if it's Jid or JID, yeah. and like I feel like I I still don't know. <laughs> there's not an ending to that <laughs> yeah i i was the same way with uh when i first heard SZA. Oh. i was like control yeah. alt delete <laughs> so, yeah the know. first time i heard her was on uh rihanna's album mm-hmm. and like i um i had never heard of her yeah. yet and i was getting her confused with swizz beats because her, i now she sounds very different from rihanna but at the time i couldn't differentiate between their two voices so yeah. i didn't know there was two people singing on that song and yeah. then Way later, I realized it was, yeah. Yeah. Are you a Brockhampton fan at all? Um, you know, I've kind of gone up and down with how yeah. I feel about them. Like, when the, the Saturation albums were happening, there yeah. was there was a lot I liked about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Iridescence is just kind of, like, their worst album. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that they yeah. think that, too. Yeah. I think yeah, I even saw one of them tweet it. And, um, and then Ginger, I thought was like really pretty it was cool mm-hmm. i didn't listen to it too much but yeah. then this new video they did with danny brown is the like cut video. it's the best thing they've ever made <laughs> <laughs> like by far it's super hard it's super hard yeah um but the only reason i'm bringing that up is because when uh 
back when I first listened to the Saturation albums, um, I didn't know like Brock Hampton was like more than one person. <laughs> it took me, <laughs> when you were I was listening like, I was to like, it, the <laughs> mirror's on the cover, but why do am I hearing seven different voices on the album? Right, right. Yeah. So, just kind of a little. Uh, what'd you uh, What'd you think of that buzz cut video when that came out? Oh I God. thought it was really sweet. It's so funny you're saying that because uh, Overcast were doing a reaction channel. Oh so, really? Yeah, we actually reviewed that video. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll give you a little sneak peek. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was it's it's fucking it's just weird. It, it's like yeah. something out of an acid trip or like an MTV, um, like not commercial but like a little cutaway. Yeah. Type thing. We'll see. I uh, I'm a really big fan of the YouTube channel uh, Corridor Digital. Oh yeah. And I um. They shout out Corridor. Yeah, Corridor is the best. And I see my my buddy Josh, who uh, he's a filmmaker. We live together. Ah, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, fire. Yeah, he's one of my best friends. We we lived together in the dorms back in like 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's and, super cool. Yeah, and he um he he uh he was doing filmmaking on his own in high school mm -hmm. and was really into Corridor. So he showed me them as yeah. like uh some somebody to follow in terms of just doing cool stuff, you know. So yeah. I've always been. Um, paying attention to what they're doing on their crew channel and kind of yeah. like just trying to learn stuff. And they showed like all this like AI deep learning art mm -hmm. a while ago, yeah. like, like a year or two ago. And I remember thinking like I need to do a music video using like deep learning AI generated images because somebody's going to do it eventually. Yeah. And I just kind of never really made that happen. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going on in that Danny Brown, uh, yeah. Brockhampton thing because yeah. like they're all their faces are like morphing in this really weird way where it doesn't look quite CG. And I, yeah. I think they used AI to make it. You think so? Yeah. And this is with like an hour's worth of work. Imagine if we actually put weeks into this. What, we, what could we create then? It was just, it's just very different from any video I've ever seen. They, um... When when the album came out, they put out uh, song streams for all the songs individually on YouTube. And when you go to those, there's these visualizers where it's oh, like yeah, their yeah. faces, and th that's like exactly what one of those deep learning like gotcha. face gen things looks like. And yeah. I know they've been using this um, production company for all their stuff mm -hmm. for this album run because yeah. I, I keep seeing the same credit. So I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing. And I, yeah. I just remember thinking like, ah, damn it. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see the uh, the latest video uh, that they did for? I can't remember what song it was for, but it's with Dominic Fike and with Lil Nas X. Oh yeah, I, I skimmed through it a little bit. Yeah. I thought I thought it was cool that they did a video starring like two other unrelated musicians. Yeah. Because like for, from a, from a marketing standpoint, like that's just like a really easy way to get yeah. like three people posting about something. But yeah. also, it, j it just seemed like a good way of like using their resources and kind of yeah. just doing something unexpected. It, it's weird because like uh, like I'll show my friends Brockhampton and mm -hmm. they'll either love it or yeah. they'll just like not get it at all. Yeah, I mean they they've become pretty pop, so I, I find more often than not people really like them, mm -hmm. you know, and I. Yeah, uh, it's, I find it weird that Kevin is the only one who's actually putting out like any solo stuff. Yeah, and there was a part of me there the because I've had there's like the Brockhampton documentary mm -hmm. that is actually like out on YouTube. And I watched the whole thing because I used to be like a huge fan of Brockhampton. Yeah, um, and there's a scene where like uh, like Dom McLennan or whatever mm -hmm. uh, he's in his room and he's like showing Kevin this song and Kevin's just like, yeah, cool, and then goes back to immediately working See, on his so own rude. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like there's a song on the new album called, uh where it's basically uh joe was talking about uh it's called the light i don't know mm -hmm. if you listen to it or not I, I i skimmed the album i don't know them by name too yeah, well, yeah. But. um but it's basically joe when he's talking about like how his, his dad committed suicide and it's just like this super personal like basically kind of like almost like a like a sonnet or something yeah yeah he's just like rapping his heart out about like you know all the things that he's been going through <laughs> job is really divisive where people either either enjoy that he's kind of this weird guy or mm -hmm. they think that he's like the most dislikable person <laughs> yeah I, I uh i think i think merlin is like the most likable dude yeah. in that group like he just has so much personality he's just fun to listen to like yeah. i think about how kenny beats keeps doing these uh collab albums with people like denzel curry mm -hmm. and key and freddie gibbs and i think if there was like a merlin kenny album that would that would do very well yeah 
I, I've always been a big fan of Matt Champion and like especially his solo work. I think mm-hmm. Fangs is like one, yeah, probably he, one of my favorite songs. He, he, ever. he does have a bit of solo stuff, huh? Um, a little bit, yeah. It's just I wish more of the Brockhampton members outside of Kevin would like put out stuff, and it just kind of makes yeah. me wonder why they're not. I I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Well, see, like the the record deal they got was really like not great where like i think they were locked into like a seven album deal or something like that yeah, shit. and for i think the amount of money they got too was only enough to where they're all getting like a million each or something so yeah. i but i i know that they said recently on twitter that they're releasing two albums this year mm-hmm. and they'll be the final ones so i i don't know what that's about i'm or, trying to be very oh no you, the you, cup no you don't worry the, this, <laughs> sorry just the, the audio might have suffered testing <laughs> testing but the uh no you're good but like with with um i don't know if they're able to like do solo albums to like fulfill their like deal commitments or what but i i get the impression that they're kind of trying to shift a little Mm -hmm. bit yeah definitely definitely um yeah uh brockhampton cool what uh what 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 do you what do you listen to mostly um uh, I obviously uh, listen to a lot of hyper pop, so a lot of the artists that we work with. Yeah. Um, but I also uh, really love Dominic Fike. Um, Johnny is someone who I've been listening to a lot lately. Um, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know Johnny. What? What? Johnny. Sort of... uh, he did the Honey Pie song. Honey, honey, honey. Oh. No, I don't know that one. Really? Yeah. No. Um, shit. Is it like really big right now? Am I, am I fucking up? <laughs> Uh, you're not up. Uh, you're just like not with the culture, I guess. <laughs> I uh, yeah. As far as hyper pop goes, yeah. I I just love the Hundred Gex album when it first yeah. came out because like D- Dylan Brady was um the producer who was doing like almost every Tony Valor song. Like yeah. all all the early Tony songs like start with like a Dylan Brady yeah. like beat tag. Pull up. Yeah. Late night. So so good. And then uh, they pull that insane album out of their ass, and, like everybody. Yeah, that's an album where um, I it, it was like a little bit hard to get into at first, and yeah. the more and more I listened to it, I re- like it's so good because it really does have like super conventional melodies and everything. They're yeah. just using like unconventional sounds and whatnot. Yeah. So w- once you come to expect that it's it's to me it's like not a difficult listen, but I understand yeah. when people are like, "What is this?" Yeah. Um- it, for me, I was like immediately hooked when I listened to it, and I was just like, "Oh my god, uh, I I want more of this. Where can I find more of the sound?" And it just so yeah. happened that it I was like a block away from right. Overcast, and they were going to be working with every hyper pop artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just funny how that kind of stuff works out. Were, were were you when you say you were a block away? Were you working with those guys at the time or not um, yet? So. Um, with Overcast, uh, I didn't start. It was mainly just uh, Danny and Tommy. In the beginning, actually, it was just them. Okay. Um, and then uh, CQ came on, uh, who's uh, the main DP. Mm. Um, and so uh, at one point, they started re- uh, working with this artist named uh, Breakins. And they made a video uh, for Dropout, which wound up getting really big. Sweet. And Cole Bennett saw it and gave him a little shout out. And that's when a bunch of labels started hitting up Overcast. Um, and that's when they got started getting bigger budgets and they knew that I went to film school and that I knew about lighting. And so they brought me on after that. And so progressively over the course of a few months, um, we started working with, uh, or started getting into contact with hyper pop artists, mainly, uh, I'm so sorry about my phone. Do you want to just silent it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry about no, that. No, no, it's okay. No worries. Just <laughs> <laughs> Why? you're not the first person it's fine no no you're you're perfectly prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah so uh like i said before i wasn't even uh like i was a cinematographer mm-hmm. um i i started out as a director and then uh i just kind of didn't i just had to shoot all my stuff myself yeah so i naturally kind of gravitated towards being more of a cinematographer um and so, uh, but I also worked in the equipment room and I was on a bunch of sets. And so I learned how to be a good gaffer while I was doing that. And, you know, when you're a gaffer, you kind of just like learn how to be a DP intuitively just mm-hmm. by like what you're doing and where you're setting lights. Yeah. Um, 
And so when Overcast started getting all these jobs, I was brought on as a gaffer and eventually got to a point where we were about to shoot for this guy named Glaive or kid named Glaive. He's like, I think it was 15 when we shot for him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of these artists are like really young. Super, super young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh my God, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Ugh. But yeah. Um, and they were like, they knew I was like this huge fan. And uh, I was like, I think I remember I was like sleeping or whatever, like still in bed. And I got a call from Tommy and he was like, and I, it was a FaceTime call. And I just would look like shit. I was just fucking, what, what's up? Do you need me to go grab gear or something? Yeah. And he was just like, how would you feel about shooting Glade video? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah, like, sure. you're like, yeah, yeah put me in, yeah. coach. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. And those videos wound up doing uh, really well. I shot uh, for Touche, which mm-hmm. was a song that was produced by Breakins, which is partly why we shot it. Gotcha. Um, and then for Pissed, um, which was like my number one listen to song. On oh, Spotify. So, that, so, so that must have felt really good. <laughs> it felt really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, those videos wound up doing really well. And so I kind of just uh, started shooting for the hyper pop artists. And so far, I've shot for. Um, kind of like the main guys right now um, by like Glaive or by that I mean Glaive, uh, Eric DOA, Midwest, Alden. Oh, is Eric DOA Glaive? Sorry? Is that, did, did you say Eric DOA and Glaive are the same guy? No, no. Or, or, or were you just correcting yourself? I was just correcting oh, okay, myself. Okay, okay. I was, I was like, is his real they, name? They, they are. They are <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make they sure. They are completely different people. <laughs> <laughs> But no, yeah, that's all really incredible. I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. so it sounds like if uh, it, I just got really lucky. That's yeah, it. <laughs> I think that's like most people though who are like yeah. successful. You know, I mean, obviously you have to be talented, but you know, a lot of this stuff really yeah. is just kind of like right place and right time and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was funny because uh, Danny, uh, Danny and I, we went. Danny, Lucas, and I. Uh, Lucas is uh, the producer, and Danny is. Uh, the director so mm-hmm. he does all directs all the videos for overcast um <clears throat> danny and i weren't really friends in high school not that we hated each other or anything. yeah yeah we you, just you, didn't know just didn't know each other yeah, yeah we were in broadcast class together which is kind of like our av club mm-hmm. type shit um but outside of that we we never really hung out or did anything we yeah I, I have that sort of yeah. thing happen a bit, honestly. Like one of my good friends, uh, Sadia, who I've had on here a few times, like we went to high school to, with each other, but we didn't talk a ton until college. And uh, yeah. and like my friend Jay, who uh, ra- raps as QWERTY, like we, we had a math class together mm-hmm. in freshman year at college. And we, like we kept up a little bit, but like we didn't really become like really good friends until like around the time we made a first uh, video together because yeah. like he his album was coming out so sometimes you just know people yeah. and then way later <laughs> it's like shout out shout out Cordy he's fire yeah he's the best yeah yeah, yeah. I I'll, I'll have him on here soon at some point we yeah. were I I didn't want to do him immediately because he seemed like one of the most obvious guests to yeah. have on you know so I figured uh-huh. I'd do a handful to like get, get it under my belt before having on the people uh who are right. probably like most expected, but yeah. I was talking to him recently and he was like, you finally ask. <laughs> um, yeah. With, with, uh, with, with overcast. So it sounds like things like blew up pretty fucking fast with them too. It was just like that one video doing really well. And then a bunch of people took notice. I mean, it was like a, it was like a long, long road for them to get yeah. to that point. So it wasn't just like, oh, this one video. Yeah, well, it wasn't like, up. it wasn't their yeah, first yeah. video per se. Yeah. But, you know, it, it definitely, uh, like, leveled everything up. Yeah. To a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and just kind of having that co-sign from Cole Bennett really, really helps. And, um, yeah, so it's just weird that, like, I'm in this world now. Right. Relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, Is it, we'll see... Um, you, you were just saying you went to film school. And yeah. Like, that's, like, a very different uh, filming environment yeah. and lifestyle to probably, mm-hmm. like, how f- fast you're moving right now. It's, like, a, pro- a very specific thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, very different. Very different. Um, Where did you go to film school? Like, SCC or something? Uh, no, a Toronto film school. I went to school in Canada. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. How was that? Shout out Canada. <laughs> Pretty fire. Um, it was cool. Uh, I love Canada. It was cold. I got sick all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, sick all the time. Yeah. Well, being, being from here, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably not prepared. I'd like, 
just go out and like, you know, in the snow in my vans and my feet would get all wet. And I'm like, why am I sick all the time? Because like, <laughs> you're fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that uh, is that how you guys know you're a colorist or is that just a coincidence? Just a coincidence. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's he, funny. Yeah. He just, I think he was just like a fan. Uh, he was a fan of Garden. And so that's uh, okay. how he found Overcast. And then uh, he saw that CQ had a red. And he was like, you guys are going to need an actual colorist. If yeah. you want this to actually look good. Yeah, yeah. And so he's been working with us ever since. So I, I, I can definitely think of some other music videos where, like, they were yeah. recorded on a really good camera. Mm-hmm. And, like, clearly the people making it were excited about it. But they didn't yeah. really think through the coloring part. So the footage, like, doesn't look. Oh, yeah. I mean, it all comes down to, like, how you use it like there are a bunch yeah. of kids we in my school we had access to an alexa mini and you'd have kids just go out and shoot like the worst garbage yeah just horrible horrible shit see asu the whole time i went there the nicest cameras they had was like a really old red yeah really old one mm-hmm. and some primitive re as well mm-hmm. and you, you weren't allowed to use either of them like they were like these like mythological like yeah. devices that they had in the back cages that no one was allowed yeah. to touch and they weren't even really part of the curriculum the only way you could use them was if like you went to your own trouble of renting like all the cables and all the expensive shit you needed to yeah. like make it work mm-hmm. and even then they made you sign this contract or whatever and um finally when i graduated i think they got some like ursa pros or something like that because otherwise people were using those uh black magic cinema cameras the like boxy ones that aren't too great (laughs) not great (laughs) they have the black magic look but they're not amazing by any means no um so yeah like i i never really had uh access to crazy good cameras Mm -hmm. unless like we bought them ourselves so um josh he he had a sony a7s so like we all like wound up like pushing that thing around amongst like the six of us in our friend group all the time because it uh it looked decently nice and it had good low light and everything yeah yeah um yeah i i just got really really lucky i went to you know a pretty good school it wasn't like honestly like i it was cool because i was i had access to a lot of equipment but the school itself was the curriculum was not great yeah it was a lot of like i swear to god if i walk into a fucking class and they're playing a tony zalf every frame of painting video i'm gonna kill myself like that was every class (laughs) oh really yeah and it was just my teacher my teacher wasn't like my cinematography teacher like he was a great guy but he wasn't like a cinematographer per se he was like a videographer honestly to play like devil's advocate a little bit like yeah. i i really i i really like uh every frame of paintings videos and i'm not saying that that yeah. should be like college curriculum because obviously you can just go on yeah. youtube and watch that's what that i'm yourself. saying and nothing obviously tony's amazing if you yeah. watch any of his videos they're fucking masterful yeah. they're so good it's just like that's what you're doing with your class time yeah it's like yeah why am i why am i wasting my time the, like recommend this to me to watch after class yeah well see that that's what i was gonna say because yeah. the asu film teachers there's a lot of them i like a lot mm-hmm. and there's a lot a curriculum that was really useful from them but i i'd be lying if i said there wasn't like a bit of like wasted opportunity and wasted time yeah which i've pretty much heard from every film school i don't mm-hmm. think that's like an asu uh, specific thing and um yeah. i think they've hired really good people and beefed up their curriculum since then yeah but i've tried to talk to their faculty who i had good relationships with since graduating and i just have told them like listen you gotta understand like there's completely free film school on the internet that yeah. all of your students who are challenging themselves outside of class are watching. But there's yeah. also a lot of your students who maybe they only do exactly what you tell them to because they're like trusting the school system, like mm-hmm. arguably too much. Yeah. And I was telling them like you, you guys as professors like really need to like immerse yourself with like the YouTube film world and maybe curate your own playlists of yeah. like uh, informational videos. That's a and, great way of putting it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like curate curate film school playlists on YouTube and give them to your students and be like, hey, if you guys want to go binge like a few hours worth of really useful videos, go do that. And my teacher's response was basically like, we're not gonna do that because the university uh, doesn't want us to make the students think that there's things that they can learn outside of our doors basically right and that that to me that was the most like just establishment yeah. bullshit response like, we don't we don't want to give them options yeah like we want to make sure that they pay to go here and I, yeah. and I was trying to tell them like listen like there's 
things that you can only learn online because yeah. like video editing as a means of education is so different than like lecturing. Mm -hmm. But then lecturing is way different too. There's some things you can't get outside of your guys' classrooms. Like I was trying to give him a bone a little yeah, bit yeah. to like consider it more, but he just, he really wasn't budging and yeah. frustrated me. I mean, for me, a part of the reason I went to film school was just because I'm just like a, a very shy individual. And so for me, reaching out to people is really hard. And so, yeah film school kind of like forces you to be in this environment where you're surrounded by these people. And so you're forced to work together. And that was really positive for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like my, uh, they have like, uh, like levels with the cinematography class. My first level or how are they, let's call it levels for yeah. lack of a better word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, he was an alcoholic. Like he would, <laughs> he was straight up just like this drunk dude who would like come in and he was just like this old grip who just <laughs> knew how to set up lights and would teach us how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then for like our second level, um, or like my second and third level was the same guy. And he was a great guy. Um, just, you know, um, you know, he's a videographer. Like he shoot, he shot interviews. Yeah. You know, when well, yeah. it really would have been nice is to have someone who was a bit more into like narrative work or just like anything in that realm just something more relevant to what you yeah. guys wanted to learn yeah i you know with uh both like faculty members and just older filmmakers i've spoken with within arizona and stuff yeah. i find that there's people who got a lot of experience and they just really know what they're doing yeah and then there's like these other guys who have just been around for like a few decades and they're kind of like grizzled a little bit but like they're not super up to like what's going on and yeah it's uh it, it can be frustrating so i i, I think film school has a real opportunity to kind of like marry the new ways of teaching with the old so like you know you obviously you must have felt like your time was being wasted by watching a video essay in yeah. class but to me like our teachers wouldn't even acknowledge that that existed right. so like it, it, it I, I don't know i uh there see like we we hired this one um cinematographer to our school like the semester i was leaving mm -hmm. named uh, philip kuslaritz and he's the nicest guy yeah. and he shot a short film for HBO starring Mahershala Ali, like Fire. Oscar winning actor. Yeah. And when you look at this short film, like it just, it looks like a feature film you would see in the movies. Yeah. So like any, any time I ever was talking to him, I knew that like this guy knows in his brain how to make something look like movie theater quality. Because I yeah. think like that's what all filmmakers more or less are like striving for yeah. uh, unless you're doing something really experimental but yeah in general it's like when you're learning cameras and lights and stuff it's just like all this trial and error to make it look like what we've seen before like the mm -hmm. professional look or whatever yeah. so the filmic look yeah so they hired this guy i'm like he knows like he knows what he's doing to the yeah. fullest extent and uh he got hired and then i graduated like a few weeks later Damn. yeah that sucks yeah i i still email with him from time to time if like i have like some questions where I'm like, all right, it's time to bring out Phil. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. time to get that Phil knowledge. Yeah. Not to say that there's, uh, I had a few good teachers. I had uh, mm -hmm. one teacher, uh, my boy, Dusty, <laughs> Dusty Mancinelli. Uh, his film actually just got into, uh, uh, Toronto international film festival. So that's pretty sick. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Super, super talented guy. How, how'd you like living in Canada? It was great. Yeah. Uh, it was great outside of, uh, winter, winter sucked. Yeah, no, I imagine. Um, but yeah, it was dope. I love Canada. It's, I've, uh, it's, a, it's like a very clean... I love Tim Hortons. Oh, yeah. yeah I've, I've, I've heard Hortons. that a lot. It's a vibe. People, I, people hate on Tim Hortons. Do they? Oh, yeah. I thought people from... I thought that was like McDonald's for them. <laughs> I know. But that's why they kind of oh, Okay, it. I got you. We'll like, say, yeah, if I guess you're so. in Canada, like, you go any block in any direction and there's a Tim Hortons. Yeah, I guess so, people here hate McDonald's too, but then it's just like, shut yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> it's convenient, dog. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've i never been to Canada before, yeah. but um, as far as like the really big uh, film cities go... Like, I feel like I'd rather go to Vancouver than Los Angeles. I know Los yeah. Angeles is where everybody feels like they're supposed to go, but I just get bad omens from that place. Yeah. Like, I just don't really want to live there unless I have to. I had only stayed in Toronto, but I've heard really good things about Vancouver. Yeah. Well, I just think it's cool that there is, like, a major city, like, even outside of America. Yeah. Because it is, 
such an industry where you feel so like gridlocked yeah. to either be in you know yeah. like one of two places. You ever watch uh, The Boys? No, I've been meaning to that that show. Great uh, show, great show, and they shoot it in Canada. So okay, I was watching that like, holy fuck, is that Dundas Square? No way. <laughs> You're like, I've been there before. Yeah, that uh, I'm pretty sure that show is partially uh, produced by Seth Rogen. Weirdly enough. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. Him it, and uh, Evan Goldberg. Yeah, him and Evan do a lot more stuff than I think people realize. Yeah, you know, I don't think they really get enough credit as just like purely writers. Mm-hmm. Like they're. Or just creative in general. They're yeah. just really, really talented individuals. Yeah. Outside of just, you know, the kind of like shtick of, uh, oh, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've smoked weed and shit. <laughs> He's a really talented guy. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I definitely love all that shit too, but yeah. like I, I, I say what you're saying right now all yeah. the time where it's like, yeah, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are like very legit like business moguls where it, yeah. it seems like they're like taking meetings and developing things all day, every day, which honestly to me, like, makes the weed smoking all the more impressive you know yeah. because you know some people can certainly function on weed and in other people it's like that that's just like the day they're having but that yeah. dude's doing like very high level shit all the time like, yeah. while, <laughs> while high <laughs> it's really impressive <laughs> yeah um you know who is a, a really uh fantastic uh like director but i don't think really gives enough credit for it yeah. is ben stiller yeah dude ben, no. literally ben stiller ben stiller is a fantastic amazing director yeah. and nobody gives a fuck you have to, bro to make tropic thunder you have to be a good director like. not even he's even gravitated have you did you watch uh, escape at danamora i haven't seen that one I, i've seen walter mitty so good yeah i mean he's just a really really um the what? thing is he didn't even want to be uh an actor oh really he, was, was like directing his thing his directing was his thing um do you watch those Hollywood Reporter? Uh, oh, I'm having some fucking indigestion. Oh really? Right now. Oh my god! <laughs> if we have to take a break, it's okay. Have you um, have you watched those Hollywood Reporter roundtables where it's like the director roundtable oh, yeah. and the, I think yeah, they yeah. I think they let Ben be in. Oh, well, they let him. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What I'm Come saying. on, Ben. <laughs> we'll let you sit at the table. I think he got to be in uh, one of the director roundtables when Walter Mitty came out, and I know yeah. it's like more of like a family whatever movie, but I I like that movie. It's very pleasant. Yeah. It's great. What was what was the one you just listed? Um, uh, Escape at Animal. It's a it's a, a limited series on Showtime with Benicio oh. del Toro and Paul Dano, and it's amazing. It's about the. Uh, it must remember? be crazy if it's those two. Oh yeah. yeah, it's it's literally it's such a good show, um, and it's all about the the prisoners that escape from that prison in New York. Uh, um, Rikers come, Island. Not Rikers. Uh, I, don't know, I can't remember the name. Of is the Rikers one. even in New York? Rikers is. A, <laughs> I don't know. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's not San Quentin. San Quentin, I'm pretty sure, is L.A. or okay. something like that. Sure. Um. Yeah, but it's not, about not, It's like it was like north, north New York, uh-huh. upstate. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Either, I but, it's, but it's about. A- <laughs> I don't know geography. <laughs> I went to film school. Um. Yeah, but uh, super. Good. And then have you ever seen the Cable Guy? Dude, I've heard so much about the Cable Guy, but I've never seen it. It's. I mean, I heard it's like insane. Like it's like really well, like it's, weird. <laughs> it's weird, but it's just in such a good way. Is it starring Jim Carrey? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just kind of interesting how uh, you just have to watch it. Like it's okay because I uh, w- one of the main reasons I went to film school honestly yeah. is Judd Apatow and like Seth Rogen movies. Really? Yeah. I like when I was in so when I was in high yeah, school, you were and, like you saw the Forty Year Old Virgin. You're like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Kind of. Yeah. Like I know that sounds crazy because most people like watch like Pulp yeah. Fiction or some shit. It's a but, good movie. But like it's a good re- movie. really, what it is is when I both both my parents and yeah. my brothers are artists. So like I've just been around like art. Like always. Yeah. So when I was in middle school and high school, I listened to a lot of music. I watched a lot of TV shows. Yeah. And amongst those things, one of my biggest interests ever is comedy. Yeah. So I, I would watch a lot of stand up, and the, those fucking like Apatow movies are just so yeah. goddamn funny. I just remember thinking like, this guy gets to just write nonsense, put all of his friends in it. He gets paid to then just go film his friends being like idiots, and like, yeah. and then. The thing I really like about his movies is that they, I felt like they always went a step further with the drama and kind of like the humanity in it. Like you can tell yeah. that Judd has like a real love for like people and like, you know, movies like Knocked Up or even Super Bad, there's like very legitimate, like good, like life lessons and stuff yeah. like that in there and like really like tender moments, you yeah. know? 
And so I, I've always been really into like slice of life sort of Richard Linklater sort of stuff yeah. too. So so to me those Apatow movies was like the perfect blend between those like indie movies and kind of stand up comedy sort yeah. of world. So that made me just kind of think like I can make movies. This guy makes movies. Yeah. Yeah, but I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, so like listening to the interviews, I remember Judd always talking about like the, 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 it's called the cable guy or the cable man. The cable guy. Yeah, the ca- he would talk yeah. about the cable guy and how like it was like this, this line in the sand yeah. of like the comedy world of like, like yeah. pre cable guy and yeah. post cable guy. Um, and that was at like the peak of Jim Carrey's career. And so when that movie came out, it actually, did like the worst out of all the previous movies that yeah it's, out, like, a, it's it, like a failure right it's technically a failure i think it broke even so okay. like it wasn't like a total loss but yeah um yeah i think uh judd apatow on top of just like producing it i believe he also just did a bunch of rewrites for the script like he just yeah he punched it up well he's like a weird comedy godfather figure where he mm-hmm. like shows up in a lot of things that he's not directing like he's yeah. connected to a whole bunch of stuff yeah 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 he's always been good about taking care of others i mean look at freaks and geeks yeah freaks and geeks is so good i was watching that the other day and i was like oh my god so i've good. i've watched well see it's only one season so i've watched through that show like it, it yeah. i'd say at least like three times or so mm-hmm. i because like before streaming was really a thing our family would always just like record episodes yeah. on the dvr so like i would always like wind up watching the new episode of the office like three times yeah. before the next one came out you know because there just wasn't <laughs> as much to to watch isn't it kind of crazy how like these tv shows can kind of just get this entirely new life like after the fact like yeah. 20 years later yeah like um twin peaks it's for instance or, or like yeah. or just like the office is a great example. I, even though it was really popular at the time, but like not not in the way it is now. Not in the way it is now. Because I, I was really into all the NBC uh, Thursday night comedies in high school. I watched Community, The Office, Parks, Thirty Rock, all that stuff. Community is amazing. It's so good. And Probably one. I think it's the best. It's got to be the best. I I put Arrested Development higher. Oh yeah. Because it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of written by the same guys too, so it's like apples to oranges. But like, I didn't. Is it written by the same guys? Uh, the Mark- Russo, the Russo brothers. Oh, that they did do a, a couple episodes, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the whole way the Russo brothers got hired yeah. to uh, direct Captain America was because of the paintball episode. Oh of yeah, Community. yeah. I'm Isn't that fucking insane? That's all. I mean, it's a fucking fantastic. I mean, the fact that it's TV. And yeah, that they were able to accomplish something at that level. Yeah, and it's, and, it's pretty insane. And from what I hear, like really low budget too. Like Community wasn't given that much money no. because the network didn't believe in it at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell in the episodes, like it goes so crazy. <laughs> like you're like, oh, they're they're losing over there. Yeah. Well, uh, you ever watch uh, Heat Vision and Jack? Oh, that. <laughs> 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 Can you explain what that is for people who are okay, listening? So, uh, Heat Vision and Jack is basically a show that was created uh, by Dan Harmon and yeah. Rob Schraub. Um, <laughs> Dan Harmon created uh, Rick and Morty, and he was also the creator and showrunner for Community until he got kicked off. <laughs> yeah, and then rehired. And then rehired. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, it was a, uh, and it, this, this is so crazy how it circled back, how it circles back because it was directed by fucking Ben Stiller. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was directed so, by Ben Stiller. <laughs> um, so uh, he vision Jack is basically uh, Jack Black. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plays an astronaut that's exposed to an absurd amount of radiation from the sun, and he develops super genius abilities. And then uh, Heat Vision is uh, his talking. <laughs> His unemployed roommates, his unemployed roommate who was turned into a talking motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful. And it's uh, it's basically like a pilot episode. Yeah. When a TV show is being created, mm-hmm. the first episode is usually called the pilot because it's like made on speculation and then they wind up like yeah. shopping it around to different networks. Um, so this was like this network pilot that just existed out there where fucking yeah. Ben Stiller, uh, Dan Harmon, and uh, Jack Black made this really yeah. weird thing. Owen Wilson, too. He was the voice Oh, yeah. Of Owen Vision. Wilson was And directed Vision. by Ben Stiller. So you'd think it would be like this like perfect, Slam dunk. <laughs> like a fucking slice of cake, but it was uh, nobody fucking wanted it. <laughs> yeah. I, we'll see. Okay. Our professor uh, played it for us in class. Yeah. Like he like used it as a teaching assignment because yeah. I, I – 
I think the the class was called Welcome to Hollywood, and it was kind of just about like, here's what this bullshit you're getting yeah. yourself into is all yeah. about. And um, he wound up showing us this insane pilot, and I, I was like, I think Dan Harmon was like in it, maybe. It, it, I'm trying to think if he was in. I know Ben Stiller was in it. Okay, like, well, he was like the DJ. He must have. Well, Dan Harmon had some club. like web series thing, or otherwise, then that yeah. was like, and he showed it to us like in a pair. Yeah. So either way, I was like noticing him, and I remember yeah. the whole class. I was like, just being like, I know a fun fact, and I want to say it like yeah. that. That feeling. Yeah. So I remember like in between, uh, I went up to my professor, and I'm like, Hey, that guy created community, and yeah. I remember he just goes. Is that Dan Harmon? <laughs> like he, he didn't even notice somehow. But he, yeah. he was he was saying how Heat Vision and Jack was like this pilot that everybody was talking about. Like yeah. none none of the networks wanted to make the yeah. show because it was too absurd and like expensive to make. Yeah. But apparently because he, he was working in Hollywood at the time, my professor, and he was saying like apparently like if you were around, like it would come up a lot. Like people would try yeah. to like have a bootleg of it to watch. Right. It was like almost like a viral video like yeah. before that was a thing. Um yeah and what's crazy is that whole the whole episode starts off with it's like Ben Stiller like explaining the show to the audience like yeah. from a desk. Yeah. And then he pulls out uh, his Emmy that he won for his show that got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so the, have you ever watched the Ben wait, Stiller wait, wait, show? Oh no, I know I know a lot about it though. Just yeah. These comedians bring yeah, it up a lot. It's re- it's really really great. Um, mm-hmm. And what, what's interesting about it is that like it the first season they shot it. I, I'm not sure how it was received by like audiences. Probably not great since they canceled it. But yeah. like those, the first season won an Emmy, and so that's, they canceled it, and then they won an Emmy. Yeah, that's which really is kind weird. of like the fuck. Yeah, well, see, like the Emmys and all these award shows and shit have been like so bogus for so long too. Obviously, in that yeah. case, it's a, we're telling a positive story. But like, I'm pretty sure Michael Scott never won, or Steve Carell never won an yeah. Oscar. <laughs> You, do, you know what I'm fucking saying. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Carell never won an Emmy for Michael Scott. And I, I'll never fucking forget. There was this one year where it was the Emmys. Best actor in a comedy. And the nominees were five people from Modern Family. And then Bill Hader for SNL. And, that, and, and during yeah. that same year, I'm pretty sure like Parks and Rec, 30 Rock community maybe maybe even like scrubs in the office who knows yeah, yeah. but all the basically all those shows were going on so they could have nominated nick offerman for ron swanson uh they had a lot to choose from they had a lot to choose alec baldwin for fucking jack donaghy yeah you know now we're all like celebrating alec baldwin for his like bullshit like yeah, trump yeah. impression and i'm like dude jack donaghy is such a legend i don't know if he ever got a trophy for that yeah, but no. uh Probably. I feel like 30 Rock was fairly well received. 30 Rock was like the modern family of its time where when it was on, that was How the... How dare sh- you? <laughs> I, don't mean, I don't mean quality wise, but in terms of the award seasons, like yeah. I'm pretty sure 30 Rock Have you noticed that like was winning. T- Tina Fey's been getting a lot of hate lately online? Yeah. Well, yeah. people people started to like... Uh, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree or I'm researching any of this yeah. whatsoever, <laughs> but I, I think I, people have started to equate... Tina Fey and maybe even like Maya Rudolph and like Amy Poehler and these people is mm-hmm. like this like wave of feminism that they don't like where they're like yeah. kind of woke but then there's other shit they don't fuck with yeah. so it's it's one of those things I, I don't know yeah. to, I to me like Mean Girls is my favorite thing she made honestly yeah. I I always liked Thirty Rock but it um. And I'm not even against dry comedy, but there's just something about the tone of that show where it doesn't get me laughing as hard as like some of the other shows that are a little bit like zanier and stuff. And uh, Kimmy Schmidt has good jokes too, but I just can't super yeah. get into it. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, um, I just saw the whole thing where it's like the the Asian girl saying the N word. Oh. The, and I was like, oof. Uh, Don't remember that part. Was that in Mean Girls yeah, or Kimmy Schmidt? Yeah, in Mean Girls, yeah. You know, yeah, I saw somebody make, like, this, uh, yeah. I don't know if it was a Twitter thread or a video, but they, they were basically breaking down how Tina Fey has, like, a long trend of, like, not the best, like, Asian character representation, Yeah, you know? Um, I, I, I remember, like, uh, they, they were pointing out how, like, there was, like, one Asian character in Mean Girls, and she was sleeping with the the coach and oh, then yeah, yeah. and then they they did an entire plot line in Kimmy Schmidt where she's like dating uh 
uh, Asian boyfriend, and he... I don't know if they made him, like, stupid or, like, just really stereotypical or yeah. what, but it, it was, like, some shit like that, and... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... You know, the more I think about it, I think it was, like, this, uh, like, black kid on YouTube, like, making a video called, like, Tina Fey's Weird Relationship with Race. Yeah. And he was saying how he is a fan of the shows and stuff, yeah. but, like, if you take a look, like, there's there's kind of some weirdness yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so that, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, to say. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say <laughs> about it either. What else, what else can we that. talk about? Um. Are you a big film buff? Are you big no, big not really. Guy? I mean, the, the thing about like me with like film and TV yeah. and stuff is I, I just really like what I like, you know? Mm-hmm. So if there's some acclaimed classic and I watch it and it's amazing, yeah. that's great. Uh, at the same time, I just saw Godzilla vs. Kong twice and I think it was, yeah. it was so fun. Fuck yeah. Because it's such it was such a stupid, stupid, stupid movie in like an enjoyable way. Yeah. Because there's some... St- I, I'm not going to love every stupid movie. Like I don't really want to watch Rampage yeah. by The Rock, but this movie... Felt, I, yeah. I actually... Uh, the first Godzilla movie, or like of the new, the Gareth Edwards one, I loved. I thought it was oh, amazing. Yeah. I thought it was so sick, and people were people hated I, on it because I they thought it was only... a little boring. Really? Yeah. I thought. Aesthetic- Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I thought aesthetically. You can clip this, bitches. Ah. <laughs> I thought aesthetically that movie was uh, very enjoyable. Yeah. But like, as far as watching it like i just yeah. it because i i remember like i i think the biggest criticism i saw was that like godzilla is like only in like eight minutes of but the that's whole... the fucking cool part <sighs> i guess it's like jaws <laughs> i get i see i knew you were gonna fucking say jaws it's like jaws dude to me here's the difference for me All with, right. with, with jaws they were trying they, sh- they show him but yeah. they do it in like little blips where he's not on screen when when he's on screen yeah. it's really fast because they didn't want to like mm-hmm ruin uh how shitty the practical effects were at the time yeah, yeah, and they kind of wanted to like mask it and make him more mysterious yeah but to, to my knowledge jaws is still in the movie a bit it's just yeah. in quick blips but with godzilla like you're just waiting and waiting you're like i thought this movie was godzilla <laughs> <laughs> man I, I know i'm tearing i know i'm tearing down Yo, you know what's, are you the, uh it's kind of off topic but do you know uh you're, are you a fan of Bo Burnham? At yeah, all? yeah, I love uh, Bo Did Burnham. you hear that he's going to play Larry Bird in this new... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, the, uh, so there's this show, I guess it's going to be on Showtime, um, about the, like, the... Fuck, I can't remember what it's called, like, the Showtime era of, the, like, the L.A. Lakers Yo, with, like, Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that and all that. Ama- that sounds amazing. It's Yeah, it sounds fucking sick, but, like, for so, I was like, Bo Burnham's playing... Larry Bird? I'm so down with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, they needed a really lanky, really tall because he's six five. Yeah, he, he's like my height. Yeah, yeah. He's crazy tall. He's uh I was like, it just kinda took I was kinda taken aback for yeah. a second. I was like, he can just do anything he wants, can yeah. <laughs> he? Um he I think he shows up in that new movie Promising Young I Woman. Yes, I've been wanting to watch that. I've heard really, it's really fucking good. Oh yeah. It, it I yeah, remember the, the the tra- as well. I remember the trailers for it were playing like around the end of 2019 yeah. even like so and now it's uh the whole marketing for it has like started up again because yeah. so many movies just had to like hit the snooze bar for like a fucking year because yeah. they didn't have anybody to watch it but i keep yeah. hearing that one's really really good yeah i'm i'm definitely looking forward to watching it did you watch eighth grade yeah i uh, actually got to the, i got to go to a special um screening at eighth grade that um asu was hosting and there was oh. a, there was a Q&A with bo burnham oh, so he was there that's sick and when he was running up the stairs to like leave I was like trying really hard to make eye contact with him, and yeah. and he did look up, and we walked past him like this, and he just kind of like had like, huh. <laughs> like kept going. yeah, yeah. He um, it's probably like weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he he seems like the sort of guy who is aware that he has like cultish fans, so it kind of makes his mm-hmm. antisocial personality like more antisocial. Like I get the vibe; he does not want to talk to like anybody. Yeah. I mean, he just uh. He's just one of those like, like prodigies. Yeah. You know, just like this uber talented individual. Yeah. 
Well, um, he, he, um, yeah, I mean, the fact that he was even really just a YouTuber and he like leveraged that into getting like a whole uh, Comedy Central half hour and then that turned into a special and mm-hmm. then Netflix specials and then a fucking movie deal. Like, that's that's a fucking arc right there. I mean, that's that's the best. Yeah. Uh, plus, he's fucking very talented musician. Yeah. Right. I, I no, I was literally listening to the uh like Bo Burnham like songs on my iPod in high school for sure. Oh, yeah. And so like I, I think some of the words, words, words era ones are like yeah. a little bit cringe now yeah. in <laughs> retrospect, but the, the make happy and the what special are really yeah. great. I love the uh what's that one song? It's like my whole family thinks I'm gay. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't know the name, but I feel like he had like yeah. a, whole, a lot of that <laughs> going on mm-hmm. for sure. I um, uh, the one the one thing about him directing movies though is it's just a shame that there like won't be more uh, comedy specials. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he can pretty much do whatever he wants. So yeah, it's kind of a vibe. I'm really interested on what his next movie will be because I know he. He said, like, with eighth grade that he wanted to make something, and he decided he wanted to make something about how he was feeling, and he realized that he was feeling really insecure and, like, looked at, yeah. and then he realized, oh, well, you know who feels like that? Middle schoolers, my yeah. fa- my fans. Mm-hmm. So it, uh, it clearly was a very uh, personal, like, in-the-moment sort of a movie, so now I'm yeah. wondering if his next one will be a little bit more, like, world-building-y or, yeah. like, what sort of thing he'll do. Yeah. Uh, do you watch mid nineties at all? Yeah, I really yeah. like. Yeah, those those two came out the same year, and it was like a mm-hmm. wonderful year for A twenty four movies, mm-hmm. and they, they got totally snubbed at the Oscars. Um. Yeah. It's. Uh. I was. Uh. I was listening to an interview with. Uh, do you know who Mikey Hector is? Yeah. Is he uh, the illegal civ yeah, guy? Yeah. Yeah. So he's coming out with a movie called North Hollywood, mm-hmm. which looks really good. You kind of look like the dude. <laughs> in Writer. <that> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what's his What's his name in uh, mid nineties? Fourth grade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah fourth yeah, grade. Yeah, that's a fire nickname. Yeah, that's crazy, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, he, I was listening to an interview with uh, Mikey Hector, and he was talking about how he does not fuck with Jonah Hill anymore. Yeah, that uh, was disappointing to me. I, I I don't really know how to feel about it because mm-hmm. because he kind of implied that he doesn't fuck with, fuck with uh, Spike Jones either. Yeah. Because he worked closely with both of them, and he, it was it was in that Big Boy interview, Big Boy in the Morning, and he he kind of didn't say what actually happened. Yeah, he was just saying like, "Yeah, man, don't meet your heroes. They, uh, I do stuff for them. They don't do stuff back." Like that was like the yeah. whole thing. And I, I, I'm like, well, both those guys seem like really nice talented dudes and like you're yeah. not giving me a ton to work with here so i'm, I'm pretty neutral on it at the moment but yeah. i I, but, um, uh, I was disappointed though to hear that because i would hope that he would have had a good time working with those guys yeah i think a part of it is just like uh has to do with maybe jonah hill using illegal civ as a way to kind of like like not verify his movie but kind of like really kind of uh like prove Block. it, prove it to like the skate culture yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Like, exactly. Yeah, I mean that like oh this is a movie for skaters by skaters, you know. Yeah, and, I don't think that that's like a lie necessarily though. Just because like mm-hmm. I because I, I get I get that viewpoint for sure because for Mikey like he he couldn't be more close to it like that that's like his friend group his yeah. group you know. But then it's like according to Jonah like that is his shit like that's the stuff he's been into his whole life yeah. and then it's like if you're going to cast a group of guys to be in a movie like that and it's being like pretty independently produced it's like do you do a random casting call or do yeah. you get these guys who probably deserve more notoriety than they're getting so to me i looked at it as a, as a positive but i did you ever see uh the rental no which one's that it's the uh the one about uh it's directed by Dave Franco actually James Franco's oh, okay. brother I didn't know he directed anything. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's actually really good. Um, it's like a horror film about like uh, two couples that go off to like this uh, Airbnb. It's like a... Oh! Yeah, it's like the like the white version of Get Out. Like it's does, just a very... <laughs> does it have Jason Schwartzman in it? Is it that one? No. Jason Schwartz. No, it's... Uh, does it have the girl... It's Alison Brie. Um, Annie from... Yeah, yeah, Annie, yeah, yeah. And uh, fuck, the dude from... You ever see The Guest? I can't remember his name, but uh, that guy's in it as well. No, maybe I'm confusing it with something else. But is it like, 
It's like a getaway movie, and it's like weird. Uh, it's basically it's kind of just like a it's just a thriller that takes place uh, in like a an Airbnb, mm-hmm. like on the coast of like Oregon or something like that, Washington maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, super good movie. Um, Christian Sprenger, um, who is the who's like Hero Mirai's DP. Okay. Who do, do worked on um atlanta yeah yeah yeah. and uh glow you ever watch glow yeah i i watched the first season i didn't super keep up with it but it was pretty good i i kind of fell into it during just like the quarantine session Mm -hmm. and it was really great does does it does it like keep on it gets better yeah oh it gets better even i should go back to that i like that mark maron's in it yeah 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 the first uh the first episode i think it's like the third or fourth season i can't remember is so funny okay basically um allison brie um and uh i can't remember the, the other girl um they're watching um a live they're doing like a reaction thing mm-hmm. of this big event that's happening and the big event happens to be like the challenger yeah. launching and yeah. you know the challenger like blew up uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so allison brie is like these pathetic rocket cannot go anywhere <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's Oh, and then like it actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, she's like, fuck. <laughs> mm. that's, that's, there probably have been like actual di- disasters. Wait, let me ask you a question. Do you use, uh, do you use Google Maps or Apple Maps? Oh, Google Maps. Google Maps, right? Because yeah. Apple Maps sucks. Apple Maps people, get your fucking shit to. Why are you still? I, I get that you like the iOS like world. Get out. Stop it. Dude, use Google. Be an adult. <laughs> Use Google grow, Maps. Grow up. Please. Anytime. Just be, fucking grow up. I remember when Apple Maps launched in high school, there was like all these news stories that it was sending people to like completely wrong destinations. It still sends me to the wrong place. I don't trust it. They see they. I remember we were trying to get to like the marquee mm-hmm. theater. We were trying it out and it yeah. just sent us to some dude's house and it was yeah. like, you were here. We're like, bitch, you were not. <laughs> we are not here. <laughs> I, would, I would trust Bernie Madoff more than more than <laughs> Apple Maps. I'll, I'll be completely real. Like I, I in modern days day times yeah. i have not had crazy problems with apple maps yeah but, I'll, i'm i'm you know but but when i'm in my friend's car and they hand me their phone and they're yeah. apple mapsing us it always has me yeah it, it always has us go some like in a way i would not normally it's either go. you use for people listening it's either google maps or ways you don't use apple maps <laughs> pussy ways ways is supposed to like micro observe like every yeah and like take you in like really weird yeah. like little it's like it's the shit like it tells you when cops are on the road yeah. like it's it's like if you leave by this time it gives you like estimates like based on like what's happening around you like traffic wise yeah it's really really cool i re- there is this comedian named this P- podcast sponsored by ways <laughs> <laughs> i wish <laughs> ways give me that money i'll talk about you guys all the time there's yeah, this- you know it's really easy to uh get like a like a gyaki sponsorship like all you have to do is like take photos of it send it to what the fuck is gyaki that's the yerba yerba mate tea oh you know i'm talking about can i get wait a minute <laughs> so you so he so uh we shot for this guy named dempsey hope yeah he's got a buddy named dom super talented photographer yeah he's telling me he's just he's like yeah i just take photos of like yerba and i send it to them and they get free advertising and they just send me like big cases of yerba i they don't will... pay him money they okay i need i want money not yerba but i mean Yerba's pretty fire <laughs> yeah i guess i could go to asu and like just sell cases of yerba and or, <laughs> make... <laughs> probably make a lot of money yeah yeah I, uh, dude, one thing about ASU, they always have these, like, Red Bull girls walking around. They just have, like, girls with backpacks of Red, Red Bull. Oh, Red Bull. Yeah. I think you said Red Bulls. <laughs> I was like, what? Red Bulls girls. Yeah. Yeah, no, they just have these girls, like, walking around with backpacks just to give students free Red Bulls. Are they, like, just, like, it's ASU just, students? Or no, are they no just they're like, employees just on campus. Really? Yeah, and they just they're go allowed to, to do that? I, I guess. Or is it, I don't are think they, any like, sponsor? Do they have, like, the whole Red Bull get it, They're or? usually, like, wearing, like, some, like, short shorts and, like, a Red Bull shirt and, like, yeah. a backpack, and they're just, like, giving them the people, and the car yeah. they drive looks like a giant can. And usually if you find them, <laughs> <laughs> and usually if you find them, they'll just be like, take all of them. We want to yeah. go home. We don't want right, to be right. here anymore. <laughs> so when we were living in the dorm, sometimes we'd be like, let's go try to find the Red Bull girls yeah. <laughs> before class. Nice. <laughs> because they're usually walking around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I don't. I'm not really a big Red Bull guy. Can't I, say that I am. I uh, I'm not either. But it was one of those things where, yeah. like, sometimes in school, especially film school, where you're doing those long nights, sometimes it's yeah. nice to like have something. Have, have you ever done a cocaine? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> have you ever done a 48 hour uh, film challenge? Uh yes. How'd that go? Um, it, it went well. I mean, um, there was a uh, long nights. I wasn't. I was just gaffing it, so oh, okay. like I could leave. I didn't have to like edit oh, okay. it or anything. So it was kind of just like cool. Me, but, me, like, me, and my friends uh, did one of those things, yeah. and we, we we wound up winning it, which was super sweet. Fire. Because otherwise, I would have been so mad because yeah, yeah. like you're so tired by mm-hmm. the end of it. But yeah, we like wrote, directed, shot, edited, color graded, sound designed the the whole the whole fucking shebang yeah in 48 hours and like by the like you're just not supposed to be awake that long yeah so tired and we we wound up doing this like neo noir kind of like murder mystery sort of movie gotcha and at the time tempe town lake uh drained all of the water yeah so we wound up uh making it about like a building developer and we actually like tied in the lake or whatever so we filmed this scene at the bottom like the absolute bottom of the lake where it's right. just all rock and stuff so we're just like in this abyss mm-hmm. in the middle of the park at 3 a.m and like there's like cops driving by and we're like we don't want to be like caught for trespassing and yeah. shit it was a like film school time like gets you doing like a lot of those like fun things but now that i'm away from it i'm glad that there's more structure to, yeah. <laughs> to what i'm doing mm-hmm. yeah i feel you i feel you i've Many times I've been caught in a situation where, like, this is illegal. I should not be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, with you guys um, doing, like, overcast videos so frequently, like, yeah. I, I imagine you still are probably doing some, like, pretty, like, long nights in order to get stuff done quickly. Or m- maybe not. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, relatively speaking, we're, we kind of just have, like, a standard, like, either 8 to 12 hour day. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they did a 24 hour challenge that I unfortunately wasn't a part of because i was uh on another job yeah um but yeah that was pretty tiring for them for sure yeah um, and you, i remember like one of the videos you guys uh rented my camera for yeah. actually came out recently so it seems like you guys actually do do stuff like pretty in advance oh uh, yeah i mean as much as we can a lot of times mm-hmm. we'll get jobs where it's like we just need to get it done as soon as possible or we'll have jobs like stacked on top of each other where we kind of just like we're really overwhelmed with a lot of different things yeah yeah i uh what video um whatever the most recent one was with like the cooking like oh yeah yeah the xix video yeah yeah yeah, yeah, i shot that video that shit was fire (laughs) that that dude who owned that house was a fucking asshole oh really he was like one of those yeah i'm kind of in the industry (laughs) yeah he's like we get there just to like location scout for uh for the shoot and he's like trying to flex on us and he's like just like grabs his computer and pulls up this fox news interview that he was on (laughs) i was like i don't give a fuck about this (laughs) i was just trying to do my job well was it like an airbnb thing or like what the fuck was it um it was a peer space thing so we kind of space yeah peer space i guess that's how we get a bunch of our locations what what, what is that it's uh basically people put up their um their apartments or houses or whatever Mm -hmm. for like events and stuff so like if you want to do a photo shoot if you want to shoot a video if you want to you know i guess maybe host a party there i don't know yeah did so they like charge rates yeah yeah okay so it's kind of like airbnb but for yeah activity we (laughs) should be kicked out of airbnb because we just (laughs) fucked up a lot of houses oh really (laughs) not even fucked up but we just like we definitely lie to airbnb a lot yeah. Hopefully they don't see this interview. <laughs> I don't. We're, we're we're an hour deep. I feel like you're pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll upload a clip. It just calls Dylan explains how Overcast lies to Airbnb <laughs> regularly. <laughs> Airbnb can suck my dick. <laughs> I uh, I actually still have never used them, but I remember the first time I heard of filmmaking friends like yeah. using that as a means of getting a location i thought yeah. like oh no fucking duh like that's yeah. the easiest way to get anything you need yeah yeah uh yeah it's he was just he was just an asshole and treated us like we were just like these unprofessional fucking kids and yeah. it's like dude we're 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 kind of professional like, yeah 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 we can pay you for this 
place. You yeah. Know? We have a whole crew. Like, H- How many videos are you guys usually doing simultaneously at once? Because I imagine there's like several being edited at the same time. Uh, it just depends. Um, but like on average, like on two, average, five. Like that we're simultaneously working on? Yeah. Um, probably like between like two two or three maybe yeah like we'll be like tommy will be doing vfx work Mm -hmm. on a video and then we'll be prepping for a shoot with another artist and then danny will be working on a treatment for an artist that we're about to work with sure and so it just kind of depends and then obviously work kind of comes in waves like one month we'll be doing like a video like between one or two videos a week and then like these past couple weeks we just haven't had a lot of work because um one of the artists got covid Mm. Um, that's uh, still really yeah. nice though that you guys like have like such a streamlined team where you guys can like be uh making so many things at once but then they're still able to come out in a timely manner because yeah. like the way i'm running tall skeleton like it, it's just kind of all me at the time at yeah, the yeah. moment and like so um right now like between planning shooting editing and like in early talks like i think i'm like doing like five or so music videos right now but they're not going to come out like within close proximity to yeah. each other at all like i just dropped uh paradiddle for a uh, tech club but we a lot of that was shot in like october and like we talked about yeah. it kind of in july is and, it just the artist being like i don't want to release this yet or is it just well no i mean so? uh, well in in that specific case elijah uh tech club is one of my best friends like yeah uh, my best friend and like we um, we're, we're doing a multi video drop. So there's uh, gotcha. a few other videos. So we've been kind of making them simultaneously and we, we had a specific drop order in mind and that one was supposed to come out, um, a while ago, but we, we pushed it for several different reasons. Gotcha. And ironically, the final video in his string, yeah, we made first. <laughs> and it just because the 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 concept and yeah. the means of like everything we we're doing, it, yeah. it, it just kind of worked out that so way. Who are you, who are you like influenced by? Like what like whose work do you really kind of kind of like try and emulate, or yeah, do you kind of just like like conceptually? How does your uh, how do you just come up with your ideas? Uh, th- thanks for the question. I, um, You're welcome. See, my my main goal is to direct feature films, but at the moment, fire. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, um, directing music videos is more feasible than short films mm-hmm. uh, because with short films, I need to hire an entire crew, and at the end of the day, I'm probably not gonna like make any money from it so then the main reason to make a short film is to like boost your career yeah. via uh it getting notoriety or connections or film festival exposure and all those things are kind of really hard to do unless it's really really good mm-hmm. but if you're doing music videos you can either make money from it or uh pre-existing fans see it and fuck with what you're doing and then they go check out the rest of what you're doing yeah so i um I decided a while ago, like after I graduated film school, I have friends who are amazing musicians. I have short films I want to make. And I thought maybe down the line, eventually I'll do like video essays or podcasts. So I thought, why don't I just make like a multimedia channel where uh, people who are fans of art and music and video can just have a bunch of stuff to enjoy. So like with the music videos, I really just approach them the same way I do short films Mm -hmm. where I'm mostly looking at movies rather than like other music videos and stuff like that. And I, uh, I will say though, like you brought up hero Mirai earlier. So hero Mirai, he, um, fucking savage. He's, he's, he's the best guy. Like he's just the best in my opinion. He kind of reminds me of just like Spike Jones and that he's doing like all these, he's all these different avenues that he's going down and he's just fucking killing all of them. Honestly, like today we've kind of are, we, we've pretty much brought up every single one of the people that that answers your question. Like I, um, so like Spike Jones and hero Mirai are kind of my two guys because like, yeah. Uh, with Spike, he like you just said, like he does all these different things. Like he has a skateboard company, and he makes documentaries, and he co-created Viceland and Jackass. But then he also directs like really intimate movies, like Her and Where the Wild Things Are. But then he also does like incredible Beastie Boys music videos. Yeah, that's like exactly what I'm trying to do. Like because I don't want 
one of my interests to conflict with this completely different interest because all that stuff is just fun to make. Mm-hmm. And then Hiro Mirai, he's this guy who's stuck with Donald Glover making all these amazing, crazy cinematic music videos, and now he's directing the best show on TV. Yeah. And it's just, it's the best. And um, Bo Burnham was a really big inspiration because, like I was saying earlier, yeah. he went from YouTube channel to name recognition to movie deal. Yeah. And um, your, your channel's been kind of, how many subscribers do you have right now? Um, it, it got up to 4,600. And that's fire thank you yeah um so basically last year around well, what is your uh what is your like main f- focus i guess in terms of like what your channel provides yeah because you have that <laughs> one video that popped off with yeah the, uh, tyler I, the creator yeah i did it so i did a video essay about tyler the creator and that video is responsible for like 95 99 percent of my How subscribers many views does it have uh right now it's at 200,000. Fire. Like 220 that's um, awesome yeah, thank you. It so as far as main focus goes, everything I do is in service of my main goal of eventually making movies. Right. Um so I I definitely am artistically fulfilled the most by my filmmaking type stuff, which includes yeah. my music videos mm-hmm. uh because I'm making those a lot more often than I'm making short films these days. Yeah. But I am making one right now. And but um that being said, a like short, I'm sorry, you're making a short film right yeah, now. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. And uh, I'm really excited about it. I, uh, I'm i not sure if it's going to get to come out. Can you give me spoilers? Um, any little, not spoilers, I'm, but can you give me a little rundown of yeah, what it is? Or? I don't, I don't want to say too much, but I'm. it's a tribute to Arizona. I'll say that. Ugh. Just <laughs> um, it's honestly, like, ironic. Like, I know you're being sarcastic, yeah. but a lot of people who are from here, I think, have that attitude. Yeah. And it's kind of... I'm trying to make a short film that is like a response to like literally what you just yeah, did yeah. because I think like when you're here and you're able to like really appreciate Arizona's great the beauty of it, it it's really like really is. it's really lovely. It's, um, it's it's pretty fucking fantastic if you ask me. Yeah, uh, I, a lot of people from a lot of people from LA are like, oh my god, everything's so nice here. It's, yeah, you know, it's not it's as so over- cheap, <laughs> not as overpopulated. There's yeah. so much less homeless people here trying to stab me. It's like <laughs> crazy. Yeah, um, uh, but like. Um, uh, yeah, as far as my main focus goes, like I, I like as as you can tell from all the things we talked about today, and, yeah. and this is true of you, like as well. Like I'm just a fan of a lot of things. Yeah. So like, video essays were just really natural for me to make because re- really the way I looked at it is like, hey, sometimes I wind up like ranting to people in real life like way too much about the shit I'm into. Yeah. And it's a little bit much. So I'm like, why don't I just record and edit myself yeah. doing that? And then you people sh- can look for it. Yeah. <laughs> you should do a video essay on Hiro Mirai. I've, I've, I've th- yeah. I think, uh, That'd I, be good. I don't think anybody's really done one on him and he's had such an impact on, yeah, especially like Donald Glover's career. I mean, he's, I should, within, that's a good idea. I'm, you're uh, welcome. I'm, <laughs> I'll take royalties. <laughs> I'm getting no revenue right now. Like 5% at all. of YouTube money. Dude, the crazy thing about like the YouTube money situation yeah. is, uh, you, so, they used to have it to where anybody can monetize. Yeah. And they changed it to where you have to have a minimum of a thousand subscribers to, to monetize. Right. Last year in May, I had 60 subscribers. Right. 60. And when I uploaded my Tyler video essay, for the first like three months or so, it had like a thousand views. And then this weird algorithm thing happened in August where yeah. I, it was like a thousand views a day, 2,000 a day, 11,000 a day. And after a month and a half, I had like 100,000 views and like a few thousand new subscribers. And like right. I, cu- I couldn't believe it because I thought it was going to take me years to get to what I'm at right now. Right. I, and uh, what I realized is like, because making a video essay is literally just taking a thing that thousands to millions of other people are already a fan of. Yeah. And then making content about it, you just have all this pre existing audience. Yeah. And now I've started to get um, comments on my music videos saying, like, holy shit, I can't believe uh, the quality on this YouTube channel. I came here from your video essays. It's fire that you also yeah. make this stuff. And that was like really my goal from the beginning of like just roping people <laughs> in yeah. with like my other interests. So mm-hmm. uh, doing a podcast is fun because I just really like talking to people and this kind of gives me a way to like... Yeah, I mean, we this is uh, the longest we've ever talked outside of just oh, yeah, like for sure. the five seconds we had outside when I was uh, when we were like checking out your camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that that's true of a number of other people being yeah. on, who've been on here but uh i think it's a, a nice format 
Yeah. 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 Definitely. I don't mean to talk about myself too much, but <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We, we, it's we, not uncool of you. Most <laughs> of this podcast with, uh, with, with you, like were you, you said you directed more than, uh, did cinematography in school. Like, yeah. were, were you trying to direct movies as well? Yeah. I mean, I'd still like to, still? I just yeah. like, uh, so I originally started as I wanted to be a director. Mm-hmm. Still do. Um, but it was just kind of like uh, a means to an end where it was just like I didn't have anybody to shoot my stuff. Mm-hmm. Everybody was working on their own projects. And I was just like, well, who's going to shoot my stuff? And I was like, well, me, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just kind of naturally just got really, really into it uh, after just kind of learning and studying different cinematographers and kind of just trying to develop my own style that's such a good attitude to have though because Mm -hmm. like honestly i've come across so many people who just don't have like a do it themselves kind of attitude or if Mm -hmm. they do they they just kind of talk more than actually do shit and like i I don't think it's i don't want to say no fault of their own because at the end of the day this is all about just like pushing yourself but like life life is really hard so getting yourself to like learn anything is a bit of a task but like if you can rise to the occasion of what you just described like that's amazing because then like you know like like you said like cinematography and stuff was like a little bit of a means to an end to your directing and making your own projects and for me that's very true of like all the editing and stuff i do i enjoy it because it's like a fun pastime like i'd rather be editing a video than like working at burger king yeah but at the end of the day it's like not my main passion but i'm like somebody has to do this because i can't Mm -hmm. really hire a bunch of people forever you know yeah for real um yeah, I even find just like I learned how to solve a Rubik's cube, oh, yeah? like about a month ago, and I was so proud of myself for yeah. just doing that and just like learning little shit like that. Really kind of just like solving a puzzle, or just like learning how to fucking yeah. fingerboard. I like that. <laughs> I there's uh, I'm not gonna say what it is, but there's a skill I've been teaching myself since the year started that I'm not telling anyone about, and I'm hoping by the end of the year I can is it just juggling. I. I can juggle. Bro. It is juggling. No. It is juggling. No, it's oh. not juggling. I Fuck you, dude. <laughs> That's like the third one of those. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna be like clipping. Let's, let's like... cut to a clip. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Dylan, no. Dylan, I just I love the idea of like gaining a skill that nobody yeah. around you knows you're gaining, and then yeah, you're just yeah. able to like bust it out one day. <laughs> People oh are yeah. Like, you're like, yo, Zane can dance. That's how I got. That's how I got my girlfriend. What was that? Right, right, Sophia? What was the skill? Juggling. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. She was impressed. Oh, for real? Did you yeah. just like walk up to her and be like, hey, watch this? She was like, what are those <laughs> tennis balls doing there? I'm like, oh, those? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Immediately. When became you, my girlfriend. When did you learn to do that? I just taught myself uh, over uh, quarantine. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, it was something I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And so I just like. That's one, one of those things where it's not yeah. a profi- per, like a particularly useful skill, but yeah. you're like, I wish I could juggle. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I highly recommend anyone who wants to learn juggling to do it. How, how, how long did it take you with the Rubik's like Cube? A, uh, like two weeks, I think. Oh, that's not bad at all. No. Um, it's just like, it's just like, it's literally just like patterns. Oh, yeah. I, I know just, it's just like some algorithm that you memorize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just never taken the time. Yeah. It's, 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 it's uh, Rubik's Cubes are weird because you either don't know how to do it at all. And then when you're yeah. holding a Rubik's Cube, it's just kind of an uh, object. You don't have a relationship or you know how to do it so well that there's zero challenge to them. And then you're just like, hi, I did it. Yeah. So like the whole intention of giving somebody something to work on for like a while, like that doesn't really exist with anybody. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of uh, different ways of solving it. Like once you actually, so there's like solving it like in the regular way, but then there's also like LF four to squared control. It's like some weird yeah. like pattern that you can like pick up on and you, that way you can solve it in like under like a minute. Well, what I love about like just being in the YouTube generation is like there every single little like micro world you can think of, like there's a whole yeah, rabbit hole community going on there like I, I like my my old roommate got me into beekeeping videos on youtube just yeah. these beekeepers Fuck yeah. finding these like massive massive hives and like super carefully cutting into them and like vacuuming out all the bees it's oh, like yeah. you can you can watch people do the most specific shit like all day long and yeah. that that makes it even harder for you to like gain your own skills because it's so easy to just like watch other people do shit all day yeah. so i get really impressed with anybody who 
uh, whether like if they're a camera person or whatever it is, just being good at something, I, I find just really uh, encouraging. Do you ever feel like overwhelmed? Like there's so many people with so many great skills, and it's just like, yeah, why the fuck am I even doing this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like funny story, like fucking um, so like Lucas, your guys's producer. Yeah. yeah. Um, fuck that guy. He <laughs> he was all Piece when I, shit. when I was starting off with a uh, tall skeleton. Like yeah. he was always like really nice to me and yeah. like would send me messages being like, "Hey man, this shit's great." And I'd be like, "Oh, thanks, Lucas." Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I I met him in 2017 on a music video shoot, mm-hmm. and um, and I was like catching up with him one day. And I'm like, "What have you been up to?" And he's like, oh, I'm like working for Overcast. And I said, what's that? And he sends me the page and I see that like there's like another music video company in the area. And like all my friends were following it and shit. Yeah. And I didn't even know you guys existed yet. And I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, there's another one. Yeah. <laughs> so like in terms of, yeah, like whether or not it's like people immediately around you or just on the Internet. Like, yeah, yeah it's overwhelming. There's yeah. like so many people. But, you, you know, at, at the end of the day, you can't let it keep you down. Because if you really want to like be good at something, like you just got to do it because it's fun. You yeah. Know? I knew this one girl in the dorms who she wound up changing her major and she literally told me like, yeah, like I just realized like people like you and Josh, like they're, you, you guys are so good at what you do. Like I, I'm just going to quit and get, get a different major. And mm-hmm. I didn't think she necessarily literally meant me and Josh. Like I think she was just saying the idea of like, you know, students who, but yeah, when I started film school, I didn't know fucking anything. I didn't know more than her. I was just winging it, right. <laughs> you know? So really it was just a matter of, like being willing to to do that or yeah. not. It was weird when I uh cuz I was like always been like uh kind of a big film buff type of guy. Mm-hmm. Um and so when I went to film school, I was like, okay, I need a bunch of people who are big, I don't know, Bergman fans or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um and then uh I go there and nobody knows anything. Mm. They literally knew nothing. There was like one other guy who would like what who even knew what the criterion collection was <laughs> we'll see <laughs> I, I mean i kind of would have been one of those guys to be honest yeah. like to to this day like most yeah not to say that it's a bad thing but it is kind of interesting um, yeah just to kind of like because i don't know for me i always like it's something that i've been passionate about for like a really really yeah. long time and for something for some even uh not to say that it's like a bad thing to go into like something like film school mm-hmm. with like no prior knowledge but like it was definitely kind of like eye-opening for me to see that yeah people are coming at things from like really really different angles yeah yeah i uh, have you ever watched my hero academia Mm. it's uh it's like the most popular anime right now i I just finished uh death note oh i've never seen it so good it's i know it's supposed to be like just fucking crazy really cool yeah my my hero academia is like the most uh popular anime right now and it's about like um students training at a superhero high school basically oh, that's fine. and the the main theme of the show is how everybody there like wants to be number one like they all want gotcha. to be superman basically so like they kind of it's mostly like a show about like character and backstory and like something the main character says is how like same thing he's like looking at one of his classmates they're kind of equally powerful and he's just like man this guy's coming at this from like a completely different like childhood point of view and like yeah. we're, we're here for way different reasons but we're like working towards the same thing and film school is interesting in that way because like i like the two people who wind up inspiring me the most are like donald glover and kanye honestly like i look at these like super diy guys who like are just like just so talented and so multi-talented and it's amazing and Mm -hmm. like interstellar is like tied for my favorite movie you know and christopher nolan is such a powerful amazing filmmaker and i I super look up to him too but like people people just kind of wind up coming at things from like such different places Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no that's uh that's really interesting that your film school is like an anime (laughs) <laughs> i uh well see like uh the, the the longer the the longer you go there the more the classes you have are with like smaller groups of people yeah and so like the first year like the intro to film class was in this giant lecture hall with like over 100 people in it yeah and slowly kind of just like do it yeah whittled away. yeah yeah and you know so they kind of make these freshman classes designed to where like people who are taking it as a random elective credit can get yeah. in there and some kids i know like my friend christian uh Milha, he he's an amazing filmmaker and he's like so jacked up on like film history and stuff like yeah. that he, he watched over 500 movies last year like he watches like one to three a day and but then like i knew other kids who like were obsessed with film history but they like never 
that's like the only thing they cared about. Yeah. So they, they weren't like teaching themselves skills. <laughs> yeah, they just liked it. Yeah, so like I, I always had this joke that like the more you know about Citizen Kane, like the worse a filmmaker you are. <laughs> because I just found this relationship between kids who were like super, super film buffs, but they like didn't like make anything. You yeah. Know? Um, so like it's cool. It's cool that like with you, like you were like in it and like you kind of stuck to it and thought like, no, I'm gonna use this like passion to like go like learn shit and like teach I've myself actually things. Tried to stray away from watching uh, so many movies just because I felt like. I wanted to just think of something like original and mm-hmm. so much of my brain has just kind of like absorbed just like films and stuff. And so yeah. it kind of became hard to just like think outside of that realm. Yeah. Um, we'll see. M- music videos are an interesting medium because yeah. like you don't need to explain why anything is happening. So yeah, it's like, it could just be like an aesthetic video. Yeah. It's and, just like a big game of like what, would look interesting and fit the general vibe of like what you're listening to. Yeah. By the way, I think that uh, Midwest video is your guys' best video. Oh, thank you. I dude. think that's the best one. You it's, think so? Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. You, you did a great job. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it certainly helps that that song is really freaking good, yeah, too. Yeah, like it really the song. helps that the song is dope. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, the editing on it is really slick because the, uh, it had, like, the song has like a lot of, like, you know, and, like, yeah. you guys... You did a good job of like shooting like movement that like fit it, and I thought yeah. the the ray goggle thing looked really sweet. You know, like those like circular red oh, eyes. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the demon stuff. Yeah. How? By the way, I wanted to ask how <laughs> those floating rocks in the beginning. Yes. How'd you do that? Because I had a few ideas, but I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I have it right. Um. Yeah. Tommy actually just uh, basically. Um, animated them and then he just basically like had a like a plate shot that they created and then just kind of like animated from that did you so okay so there's like a a pile of rocks and they start floating up at different rates did you film those plates on location or later um no so we just got the shot of like the rocks and then tommy went in and like created his own plate from that like i don't know how, how he built it but like yeah I, think, I guess what I'm saying, did you film the rocks, like, on location when oh, yeah. you were with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the rocks were real. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot. Yeah. If that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And did, did you film them, like, individually or, like, while they were all stacked like that? Oh, while they were all stacked. See, that's what impressed me the most about it because I was I was thinking that's what you probably did. Yeah. But they all float individually. And I remember thinking, like, okay, well, if they're sitting on top of each other, they're casting shadows mm-hmm. and like also they would probably be getting cut off by the one above it in like kind of a weird way like i'm just thinking of how like i would have to rotoscope it yeah yeah. and it looks like pretty nice so i was i was like tommy did tommy uh tommy and matt did a great job with that video yeah um yeah uh everyone everyone killed it on that video it was just uh, and that the helicopter thing worked really good yeah yeah Yeah. are you talking about like the actual shots of him hanging off the ladder well well, when the ladder first falls down that just like, it was so effective because clearly one of you guys is probably just, like, on a ladder, like, dropping it down or something. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I think it was Lucas or something who was, like, holding the ladder just just above the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then right when uh, Ed, by the way, Midwest, his name is Edgar. Edgar. By when Edgar came, like, into frame, uh, then we just queued because basically we had, like, uh, my 300D. Mm-hmm. And we just skirted the side, so the light was just all pulling down onto yeah. Edgar, so it wasn't just like spilling everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then you can see in the background we had a bunch of source fours, like three individual source fours that were kind of just beaming the wall. And I just I basically told all the PAs that we had to just like jerk it around a lot to make it to kind of emulate the look of like what you would see for like a prison light, mm. like for like one of those old timey like. Yeah. Type yeah. shit. And then, um, and then when he's like actually yeah. hanging on it, that, yeah. that's a green screen that's shot. That's all green screen, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool. It came, to, it came together good. And like what, I, what I thought was like really great about that effect is like, you know, like the him dropping it from the ladder and thing. Yeah. Sometimes like you can get away with doing something really DIY, but if it's like effective enough, like you can trick people's brains when you're watching it. Mm-hmm. Because like people who are watching that video know you guys don't have a helicopter budget. Yeah. But it worked like well. But it, but it, <laughs> but it worked. And like I remember. Um, like some uh, short film I was watching once where like they had to 
depict somebody like hanging himself and they just had him like sitting nice nice yeah they they had, <laughs> they had him like sitting on a dumpster and they had yeah. him like drop his legs down you yeah. know and like i th- i think he might have been like on a ladder or something yeah, yeah. like that but they just kind of they got the motion like just right to yeah. where like it it, to- it sold it. it it completely sold it you know and like that one moment where as the audience you're watching it yeah. and it convinces you like that's that's all you need yeah yeah um yeah everyone everyone did an amazing job for that video it was really cool um and i think what's what's cool about uh just for like the actual because i think a lot of people kind of watch overcast videos just for like the editing because it's so sick Mm -hmm. lots of like really interesting vfx stuff yeah and then it and I think that's why the hyperpop videos do so well. It's just because the actual like production level of the songs are so interesting and unique and there's all these different like sounds that are happening mm-hmm. that it kind of makes it easy for like Danny. Danny basically puts together the the, uh, the rough cut and then Tommy kind of like fine tunes it. And it's really easy for them to kind of capitalize on like the production of those uh, songs. Yeah. And I think that's part of why um, we do so well with those types of artists yeah that makes a lot of sense and it, it it's fun, it's funny hearing you say that too because like 100 gex for instance who are basically like the leaders of hyper pop right now yeah, yeah their videos are such anti videos yeah <laughs> where like they're the most low budget like grungy like it makes you mad to watch it mm-hmm. in a, like a, in a good way like sort of because yeah. that, that money machine video where they're just like doing deep lunges in the yeah. middle of like a parking lot you know what's crazy too is uh, that that money machine video. They're like walking around like those random industrial sized trucks, mm-hmm. and apparently, like when they were done filming that day, the tree from the album cover was like back there, and they just oh, shit. they took that photo randomly, and that's how it became the cover. Like they were making a video, and they're like, "Hey, let's go take a picture by that tree." <laughs> I mean, it's pretty iconic now. It's so I saw this video on YouTube of a guy like going to find it. Yeah, <laughs> that one tree that's probably just outside of like a Fry's Electronics like shipping yard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking hilarious. Do you have a favorite video you guys have made? Um, I really like. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. The Sunday video, Tom the Mailman. Um, that one's really great. Um, I like the Koi big video, which was actually the 24 hour challenge that I was talking about earlier. Um, and then I think just from like what I've shot, I really love the 2008 video. Okay. I think that one is just like, cause I think a lot of people tune in just for like, like I said before, they tune in just for like the editing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with the 2008 video, I was like. (laughs) <laughs> I, I think I did a good job. On right, that video. right. Yeah, no, not that, to toot my own horn or anything. No, that's that's but, a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, because like I, I am very aware that if I do a bunch of like visual effects, like After Effects tutorials and mm-hmm. shit in my music videos, it's gonna like make people more excited than if yeah. I don't, because people just like um, interesting like eye candy and shit, you mm-hmm. know. And that being said, like I, I really try to make stuff to an extent like i I don't like using the word cinematic but there's like not a better much of a better replacement like i said i'm kind of approaching this stuff from a little bit of like a short film like point of view you know yeah so i'm i'm always trying to like shoot really nice looking shots and like light it kind of professionally and like direct their performances to be good and this and that and it, it, it can be hard doing that like without it can be hard winning people over without yeah. like a bunch of after effects and stuff going on. Yeah. I think that just, um, what Danny and Tommy are great at is just finding, uh, a really great, uh, aesthetic mm-hmm. and helping build that aesthetic for an artist. And that's why people tune into overcast so much is just because, you know, um, they're able to find just, uh, such an interesting, unique way of just like portraying who that artist is. Yeah. Um, that kind of goes along with their sound and kind of like who they are as people. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. I'm uh, I'm doing my second video for my friend Dorian right now, and he's like a very unique guy, and he wants a very specific aesthetic. So that's going to be a more like VFX kind of mm-hmm. uh, thing, and I'm, I'm excited about that one. Um, but uh, I don't really I don't have anywhere to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no you you guys do you guys uh do a good job like fitting the the artist for sure yeah um, um it's just uh yeah it's it's really cool and all the artists that we meet are are great people like literally they're all they're all just super nice and they just love being like they stay at the house sometimes like it's a vibe yeah and people, do, do, you, do you live there with everybody i do i didn't before but now i do 
How, yeah, is it weird, like, kind of having, like, a work, living environment kind of life at um, the same time? No, it kind of just feels normal. Yeah. It's not like, uh, it's not like, uh, too different from mm-hmm. how it, I, it was before. Yeah. Um, it's just like, now I just commute less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's, it also helps that, like, we're all just really good friends and, there are definitely times where things can get difficult because you are in that situation. But I mean, overall, like we're all, we, you know, we're adults. We can just have yeah. a conversation. I, uh, I see, I have a full-time job and before I was going into the office every day, but ever since the pandemic started, I've just been able to be here, which mm-hmm. has been really nice just bouncing between that and my other stuff. And, uh, but you know, like I film my podcast here, like where yeah, I yeah. live and you know, like some people just walked in, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah that's cool. <laughs> and, um, with like the music videos and stuff, the one thing I always think is like if my channel ever does get to uh, get like a bunch of views for like the music videos and stuff, which I would really hope for, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if it'll ever get to the point where people will start noticing that a lot of the scenes take place in like the same living room and shit. Because yeah. I think like my bookshelf with like all these like band stickers on yeah. it has been in the background of like almost every artist I've looked at like on accident or something like I that. There's like all these like little commonalities. Yeah, I mean we shoot at the house all the time. Yeah. For every fucking video. Yeah. Every room is utilized to um keep us from having to travel somewhere yeah. where we have to pay for a location and have to deal with some douchebag <laughs> who wants us to fucking clean his house. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's uh, good to work with what you got. Yeah. Um, I uh, I think I think we can wrap it up. I'm trying to think of like if there's any last yeah. final question to ask you. Yeah, you want to ask me one last question, one last <laughs> send off? Yeah, I mean, I guess like um, I, it sounds like you're really happy like working with these guys, and you say that you still want to like direct mm-hmm. uh, movies and whatnot. Is there? Uh, we're still pretty early into the year is there any sort of like goal you have like creatively or whatever like something that you like you're just really you'd be really excited to do um yeah i think it would just be cool to um have someone like uh like a bigger artist kind of reach out to me after seeing my work i think that would be like that would just feel really good Mm -hmm. or just anybody in general just to kind of be like hey i saw this video that you shot yeah can you shoot this video for me yeah um but I kind of just want to be doing right now. Uh, right now, I'm pretty happy doing what I do. But if I can start directing more, that would be definitely definitely a vibe. I also want to start... Uh, I've never shot on Anamorphic before. So that's a goal of mine Ooh, this year. Yeah. And I've never shot on uh, Super 16. So I'd love to do that as well. If you get an Anamorphic, invite me over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, well, uh, th- thank you so much for coming over. Yeah, of course, man. Thank yeah, you. this was fun. Thanks for having me, dog. Cool. All right, I'm going to cut it.